We live in the now era, a world of instant goods and instant entertainment. We can buy almost anything with one click. We can get almost anything with free overnight shipping. Everything is streaming on demand. Love begins by swiping left or right. We have internet with super giga megabit speed. It's all incredible, but it highlights our obsession with technology. It decreases our average attention span, but worst of all, it builds bad financial habits. This world of instant everything has its drawbacks all the way down to your wallet and your future financial success. It leads to greed, overspending, and individuals that would rather binge another show than start a side hustle. And if this all sounds dark and ominous, don't worry. I'm not a highlight the problem guy. I'm a solutions guy. I'm a money mindset guy. I'm an optimist. So today I'm here to highlight three forgotten and underrated secrets of financial independence and how focusing on these can help you achieve long-term financial success. Putting it all together is how you can make huge financial strides. So do stick around until the end. Secret number one, delayed gratification. Delayed gratification is the ability to resist the temptation of instant pleasure. It's saying no in the present in hopes of getting a longer lasting reward in the future. When you know how to practice delayed gratification, you can wait for what you truly want, earning a bigger payoff down the line. When we buy things or stuff, it gives us a shot of adrenaline or dopamine, but that happy feeling is fleeting. It fades. It ultimately disappears for good, sometimes just hours or even minutes after each purchase. This is called the hedonic treadmill or hedonic adaptation. We eventually return to our baseline level of happiness, usually sooner than later. Then we seek that adrenaline shot again, and over time, the time between adrenaline boosts from instant gratification shrinks. It can even become a problem. Shopaholic, anyone? Delay the cheap and easy right now so you can wake up to a better reward tomorrow and the day after that. Resist now so that you can enjoy a bigger reward in the future. But how does one do this in practice? Delaying gratification is about building systems that work rather than relying strictly on willpower. From there, it can be conditioned as systems turn into a habit or routine. Systems build self-awareness and discipline. It builds the willpower muscle without active effort. So pinpoint the things you find addictive, pleasurable, or perhaps destructive when overused. An easy place to start for many is technology, or more specifically, it could be your cell phone usage throughout the day. So pinpoint your daily distractions and actively work to control them. For example, set timers or limits or just keep your phone in an entirely different room. For me, it's checking my email inbox across my work, business, and side hustle accounts far too often in any given day. So to combat this, I actually recently turned off notification badges and sounds, and I no longer check my personal inboxes during work hours. Those two actions have given me back no less than 30 minutes a day. That's three and a half hours a week. That's 14 hours in a month that I was wasting for these mini dopamine shots from checking my inbox. Think of what you could accomplish with an extra 14 hours a month. When people say they don't have time for a side hustle or pursuing passive income streams, I say, sure you do. You just need to figure out your time sucks and eliminate them with systems. So when you delay gratification from shopping to eliminating your time sucks, you're actually tapping into the first secret of the rich. Speaking of side hustles, this next secret of the rich is partially related to side hustles, but more specifically, secret number two is about finding flow. To help you resist temptations or avoid desiring things in the first place, focus on finding a hobby that produces Flow. Flow is actually one of the strongest types of contentment. It's that feeling you get when you're highly engaged in an activity, hobby, or project. So find a project that gives you this feeling of satisfaction and allows you to find your flow state. This will not only keep you busy instead of bored and people spend money when they're bored, but as an added benefit, it might even help you earn money on the side. I write books, I create these videos and I blog on Medium just to name a few things and I enjoy the entire process. I spend around 20 hours a week on all these projects and I don't make a great rate when all is said and done. In fact, I'll link to a video about how much I made from YouTube just last year if you're curious at the end, but I love this feeling of creating and getting better at my crafts. Plus, I help myself and others and I absolutely love the process, the flow of going from idea to hitting publish. There are many examples of flow outside of being a creative entrepreneur online. You can find flow repairing a bike, a car, or a boat, perhaps repainting your house or woodworking, or even just reading a book 
It might be getting great at baking, starting a hobby-oriented Instagram, trying your hand at photography, hiking, running, or joining a sports team. Finding flow is about optimizing happiness now and later by working through priorities and finding a state of being in which you're actually happy. And it's a bonus if you can connect it to earning money. Happiness comes from doing something you're excited about. Seeking flow via a project, hobby, or ongoing activity means you're gonna have less free time to spend money, as I said, more fulfillment, potentially more income, increased skills, and a feeling of a sense of purpose. Maybe it gets you fresh air or exercise on top of all of that. Seeking a flow state is a win, 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 win. A final note on flow, side hustles, and tying this all back to the first secret. 90% of building a profitable side hustle is mastering, delaying gratification. Most creators and entrepreneurs bow out way too early because they couldn't master delaying gratification. So commit to practice, fall in love with the process, and it might just change your financial life forever. Secret number three, optimism. You can't force financial success. What you can do instead is adjust your perspective and mindset. Don't waste time thinking about what you don't have. Change the way you think about waiting. Change your systems and look forward to the future with optimism. Most people think success leads to optimism. The opposite is true. Your optimism leads to your financial success. Some people never start a side hustle or financial independence journey because they don't think they're going to succeed. They're too scared of failure or setbacks. Look, setbacks will happen, but when they do, don't let them be discouraging. Look at these as little lessons that you needed to learn. Look at them as opportunities in disguise. It's okay to acknowledge financial problems, but don't complain or dwell on them. Optimism is how you turn challenges into opportunities. But all right, it's one thing for me to just say, be optimistic and you'll succeed, but what does it look like in practice? To name a few things, it's identifying and letting go of negative beliefs. It's giving back to others, which boosts your personal sense of positive influence in the world. It's journaling, it's practicing gratitude because being grateful is how you get more and recognize opportunities. It's collaborating with like-minded individuals. It's responding positively in the face of adversity. To tie this directly back to money and investing specifically, if the market is down, the pessimist only sees loss and fears a huge recession. The optimist says stocks are on sale and sees it as an opportunity to get great stocks at a better price. When the market is down, the optimist buys more and succeeds. When it comes to entrepreneurship, Optimism is essential. It's how successful entrepreneurs are able to set aside self-doubt to yield results. Optimism helps you run a business because it's how you attract quality, optimistic employees. It's how you spread your vision. And optimism is how you chart a path forward through challenging business times. 10% of life is what happens. The other 90% is how you respond to what happens. Optimism is the secret best way to respond to experience financial success. By the way, you know who's relentlessly optimistic? Warren Buffett. In fact, writer and data scientist Michael Toth performed a sentimental analysis of Warren Buffett's letters to shareholders from 1977 to 2016, and he found positive words far outnumbered negative ones. Only five of these letters displayed net negative sentiment scores, which were tied to actually major economic events. Several studies show that optimism is the trait that most successful entrepreneurs share. Perhaps developing optimism is your key unlock. Let the universe do its work while you do yours. Eventually, resisting temptations with systems, finding hobbies or side hustles that produce flow and happiness, and developing a positive outlook will lead to financial success gradually, then suddenly. I fully believe that. When you put these three secrets all together, you'll find success incredibly satisfying, possibly more gratifying because of the anticipation. Believe and trust financial success will come. Do work that puts you in a flow state and enjoy the process with optimism because the reward is extremely worth it.
So what spoke to you from today's chat? Is there anything you would add, a secret that helps you succeed? Do you have examples of how you find flow in your daily life or success you've experienced from delayed gratification? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments. I love hearing from you all and I enjoy replying. Thank you as always for your time today. I hope I boosted you with a little bit of motivation today. My name is Frankie. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved and want some more of it. And I hope to see you next week on the next one. Thanks.